All right, Google's way ahead of everyone else, right? They've been doing it for the longest. They're going to make something like five to seven million chips, right, of their own TPUs. You look at Amazon, they're trying to make three to five million. Uh, but when we look at what you know, Microsoft is is ordering of their own chips. It's 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 way below that number. Um, you've had a program for just as long. What's going on with your internal chips? Yeah, it's a good chips? question. So, so the couple of things. One is the thing that is the biggest competitor for any new accelerator is kind of even the previous generation of NVIDIA, right? I mean, in a fleet, what I'm going to look at is the overall TCO. So the bar I have even for our own, and which, by the way, you know, I was just looking at the data for Maya 200, which looks great, um, except that one of the things that we learned even on the compute side, right, which is we had a lot of Intel, then we introduced AMD, and then we introduced Cobalt. And so that's kind of how we scaled it. And so we have good... Um, sort of existence proof of at least in core compute on how to build your own silicon and then manage a fleet where all three are at play in some balance. Uh, because by the way, even Google's buying NVIDIA and so is uh, Amazon. It makes sense because NVIDIA is innovating and it's the general purpose thing. All models run on it uh, and customer demand is there because if you build your own vertical thing, you better have your own model, uh, which is you know either going to use it for training or inference, and you have to generate your own demand for it or subsidize the demand for it. So therefore, you want to uh, make sure uh, you scale it appropriately. So the way we are going to go do it is um, have a closed loop between our own MAI models and our silicon, because I feel like that's the that, that's what gives you the birthright to really do your own silicon, right? Where you literally have uh, designed the microarchitecture with what you're doing, and then you keep pace with your own models. And, um, in our case, the, the good news here is OpenAI has a program uh, which we have access to. Um, and so therefore, to think that Microsoft is not going to have something that's- What scale, level of access do you have to that? All of it. You just get the IP for all of that. Absolutely. So the only IP you don't have is a consumer hardware. That's it. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, and by the way, we gave them uh, a bunch of IP as well to bootstrap them, right? So this is one of the reasons why they had a mass, because we built all these supercomputers together, uh, or we built it for them, and they uh, benefited from it, rightfully so. And, uh, and now as they innovate even at the system level, we get access to all of it. Uh, and uh, we first want to in, in, want to instantiate what they build uh, for them, uh, but then we'll extend it. And so to think that we don't have, and so if anything, the way I, I think about to your question is, uh, Microsoft wants to be a fantastic, I'll call it speed of light execution partner for NVIDIA, because quite frankly, that fleet uh, is life itself. I'm not worried about, I mean, obviously Jensen's doing super well with his margins, but the TCO has many dimensions to it and I want to be great at that TCO. Uh, on top of that, I want to be able to sort of really work with the OpenAI lineage uh, and the MAI lineage and the system design, knowing that we have the IP rights on both ends. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.